Hello and welcome everybody. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're excited for the holiday weekend coming up here very soon. Uh, you're definitely in for a treat today because we are joined by our general manager of the ROI Inner Circle, Dina Iverson. Um, and today we're going to be going over Dina's journey to early retirement in five years, starting at the age of 45. And wow, Dina, I did not realize that you started investing at 45. To give everyone kind of a context of kind of where you're at right now, um, how many doors do you currently own in your portfolio? Well, we just sold a couple single families. So we, we are at 29 doors currently. That's awesome. And are any of those out of state investments? They are. We have uh, a four unit in Tennessee and a couple single families in Pennsylvania. That's awesome. And I'm sure some other people are curious as well, um, especially with real estate and how passive it can be. But um, why do you love to still work, um, even though you may not need to? That's a really good question. You know, I, I feel like successful people are busy people in general. And it's kind of funny because when we, we were telling everybody that my husband was going to retire, maybe people were saying, what? How, how are you guys going to retire? You guys are the busiest people we know. You're going to be so bored. And I remember saying to everybody, no, I think busy people stay busy no matter what and they want to stay busy. But I, I think I really have a passion for really helping other people do what I did. And, and knowing that there's so much that a new investor needs, and that I can help provide that. And, and that's why Jennifer and I think Jennifer and I both get along so well. And I think why we've connected so well from the beginning, because I saw her passion in wanting to help real estate investors as well. And so we've just kind of always aligned in that regard. So it's great that she asked me to come work with her. And how could I say no? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who could say no to that for sure? Right. And that and that's exactly what our community is all about. Not only you and Jennifer are here to help and support all of our members, but our entire community is full of investors looking to take action, whether it's your first property, maybe 10th or 100th. We're here to help and support you along the way. And not only you and Jennifer's um, past experience, but all of our members um, kind of just creates that tribe aspect um, that we love here. And um, so it's great to hear uh, the properties in your portfolio right now, um, as why is as why as uh, as well as why you love to keep working and helping other investors as well. Um, but I'm curious, what kind of got you interested uh, with investing in real estate? Yeah, you know, that's so funny because I actually forgot about it for a while. But when I was 18, I listened to a guy and read a book called, from Carlton Sheets that was all about no money down real estate. And, you know, he lived a lavish life. And it just really kind of stuck with me. I thought, man, there's so much that can be done with real estate and, and so many choices that can be made if you have the income that you can create from real estate. So it was kind of always there. And then, you know, what happens? is well so let's back up i think as we're children and we kind of grow up a little bit we have these dreams and we have these passions then we grow up and we have responsibilities we take jobs on we get married we have children and those passions slowly kind of sink a little bit lower and life takes over so i knew that there was that desire kind of always inside of me and then uh, unfortunately what happened was, uh, like I said, I got busy with my life. I owned a trucking business, which I loved. I, and once I started driving truck, that was my passion. Um, so I built a trucking business. We had a major accident with one of our drivers, shut down the trucking business after 17 years. And then within two years after that, tragically suddenly lost my spouse. So my children's father and my children were, gosh, one was not quite a teenager and one was 14. So. I then, then all of a sudden this passion kind of comes up to the surface. And, and I think it's, you know, it, it came to the surface out of fear. And that fear was what would happen to my children if I was suddenly gone? We had some money, but we didn't have anything to really take care of them or for me to help somebody take care of them. So all of a sudden I became motivated by the fear of what could happen to my children should something happen to me. And I knew real estate was it. I had been working with a real estate guru for the last couple of years since we lost our, shut down our trucking business. And um, I just knew that's, that's what I, that's what I had to do. 
Wow. Yeah. And it's so interesting to hear um, each investor's why. And I know you love touching on that is why do you want this passive income or why do you want to invest in real estate? Because everyone does have different things that they want to focus on, whether it's, you know, living some lavish lifestyle or (laughs) making sure that their family's secure, whatever it is. um, It's always interesting to hear um, each investor's why. So thank you so much for sharing that. And as we kind of dive into your uh, portfolio here a little bit and kind of what, what, what has helped you grow um, your portfolio in a fairly short amount of time. Um, If anyone does have any questions, I see that we have about uh, 10 people, 10, 11 people live right now. If, If anyone has any questions for Dina, please feel free to put them in the chat um, and I'd be more than happy to ask them for you. Um, But Dina, I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about your first property. How did you get it? How did that all work? Oh, sure. The first property was a turnkey property. It was something that at the time that I lost my spouse, I had been working for a real estate guru who traveled. We did events nationwide, traveled around and um, actually were had been helping promote a company of very well known, probably one of the biggest known turnkey companies right now. We helped build them up. And so I felt very comfortable and very safe to go to them and say, hey, I need my first investment property. What do you have that would be a great starter property for me? So I got started the easy way. I call it the easy way through the turnkey company with my first single family home. Yeah. And turnkey can be a great option to kind of have that first property as an investor. Um, Obviously, there's some great perks with that. But do you think that you would do turnkey again? No, no. I think turnkey is great for maybe somebody in my current, when I was there in that situation, uh, I, I really, you know, understandably wanted to spend most of my time with my children at the time. And I knew that I had that avenue available to me where I could just start generating $650 a month cash flow from this particular property that I could pay cash for. And so I did it and it got, it started me, it built, helped me build the foundation. Um, But I also realize now, now that I know more and understand real estate investing a lot more that I paid more than I needed to pay for that property. I paid over the cost of of what a contractor would um, charge to now help with the property that I would buy as a value add. Yeah, and that's great to hear that. I mean, obviously you're in that strategy, but now you identify that there's other strategies out there that can help um, build your portfolio even quicker. Um, Was there any strategy that you now love to use or any properties that stand out to you? Oh gosh, you know, we've done everything from flipping, burr, seller financing. I think the seller finance deal was probably the property that stands out the most to us because we went in offered a for the seller the seller wanted to get rid of the property it was a perfect opportunity to find out what the seller needed and what we wanted and make an offer so we offered nine year contract that the seller would hold giving us the option to balloon pay off the property at the time we offered one hundred forty five thousand dollars for this single family house in a in a great area in everett and she wanted out. It wasn't done. It needed some work. So with, I think, $15,000 down, and we, we were able to sublease it at the time. So the property stayed in her name until we bought it off. And it turned out that we cash flowed $600 a month rent on that property in the term that she had it still in her name. And then we ended up buying that property outright in five years with a 1031 exchange. And now, because we own it outright, we cash flow $2,000 a month. And there's still room. I mean, we could probably be getting 2,400 for that, but COVID set us back. So we're building those tenants up. So I think that's probably my, um, I don't know. It's one of, one of the best properties. It's really hard to pick a best property. <laughs> <laughs> it can be, especially when you have uh, quite a few in your portfolio. And I actually do see a question here in the chat from Jennifer. She was um, wondering if you could explain how you and your husband, Dennis, um, separate your wo- your roles uh, with operating your rental portfolio. Sure. So it's changing as we're, as we're in the last year, it's changing. But for the most part, operating the rental portfolio, I handle the tenant placements if we're if we're still, if it's a property we still manage, I handle the tenant placements, the advertisement, and putting the tenant in, setting up the payment portion of it. 
From that point, Dennis actually receives the payments and tracks those payments in his set, his specific account, which is a, a rental deposit account. And then we move all of those payments into um, our master account, which then I manage and I handle all of the uh, accounting through our bookkeeping QuickBooks and, and a bookkeeper that then goes to the CPA. Um, we're slowly moving. Dennis is learning QuickBooks, which I love. And so we're slowly, slowly moving to him actually doing a lot of the entries in QuickBooks, which saves me some time. Yeah, that's awesome. Sounds like you guys are that, that perfect team combo to help uh, take care of all of your properties right now. So that's yeah. great. And I, 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 I actually see in the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's great. And, and Dennis actually handles working with the property managers now as well. So any kind of questions oh. that come in or any service requests, he actually, actually handles that. <laughs> Awesome. I do see another question here uh, from Jennifer. She was asking uh, if you uh, could explain how you found that lease option deal you were talking about. Yeah. Well, Jennifer called me and said, hey, I think I have a property that I can maybe get you into. I know that somebody wants out of it. I believe she found that on an, as an expired listing, a property that had not sold. And she knew that um, the seller was motivated because of you know emotional reasons wanted to just get out of it so we we went together and and made the offer <laughs> that's so, awesome and i know you which brings which brings up uh, brings us to a point that we're going to talk about right um who's your who <laughs> yeah exactly and obviously you and jennifer have known each other for a while um uh, but who who is really attributed to your success is it jennifer and if so how has she helped you uh, maybe as a new investor starting out yeah absolutely i think who is your who is a big question and we all need to ask that and when i started out i started in washington state i started interviewing uh, investor savvy agents. And Jennifer was one of the gals that I interviewed, one of the gals and guys that I interviewed and who I decided to work with. And right off the bat, of course, I saw the passion that Jennifer had for helping somebody, not just helping somebody get an investment property because she got a commission, but helping somebody all the way to what do you want? What are your goals? Let's help you get there. And that was big to me. And so just seeing Jennifer's passion for really wanting to help beyond what she got out of that transaction was huge for me. And we built a friendship. We built a great working relationship. Um, she knew that if she funneled deals to me as, as a buyer, I could make a quick decision. She had many investors she was working with, of course, but she knew I would make a quick decision. And so we, we just started stacking up the deals. It was great. And I think that that's, that's why I work with Jennifer now, right? Because I think we align in the passion that we have for wanting to share and help other people get to where we have both gotten. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. Definitely. You and Jennifer are here for our community, but also our community is full of investors as well who have large portfolios, who have experience yes. um, and can help each other out um, no matter where uh, anyone's at in their investing journey. So that's great to hear. And I was just wondering, as a new investor, um, looking back, how how much or how important do you think it would have been uh, for you to get some maybe one-on-one -on -one coaching or maybe some small group coaching to help you out um, throughout the start of your process? Oh, gosh. You know, Justin, I'm glad you asked that because, you know, I spent 13000 on going to like a weekend seminar once and I learned all about wholesaling. Did I do anything with it? Not really. Uh, and, and there are those programs out there. There are those seminars that you can go to that you're going to pay thousands of dollars for. But yes, had I had what Jennifer has created in the inner circle where we, Jennifer and I coach, we help support, we help, we help, help investors achieve their dreams. You know, I honestly think I could have done, I would have done some things differently for sure, but I also could have done it quicker, quicker than five years. 
Yeah. And that's what I love with investors that come to us is that we can understand their why and then create those steps on how they can go and achieve that. And I just wanted to let everyone know um, that's listening in live or on the replay um, for the entire month of January, we're actually running um, an exclusive offer uh, where Jennifer will be hosting a four week accelerator program. So 2021 was a huge year for our investors and we're kicking off 2022 on a strong note. Um, so in the four week accelerator program, Jennifer is going to be hosting weekly live coaching calls where she'll be going over topics, um, maybe helping you find your perfect investing strategy, your top two to three markets, discussing all the financing questions um, that you have, maybe as a new investor and how to plan for the future, um, as well as new accountability groups. So these groups are members that are ready to take action um, or who already have taken action um, this year so far. Um, so we have a ton in store for the accelerator and this is available for all of our new members as well as existing members right now. So Jennifer, this is a specific offer for anyone that's looking for maybe that small group coaching, um, to help kind of kick off 2022 on a strong note. Um, as well as 2022, we got a lot of things planned, but also in February, Dina, did you want to talk a little bit about our Arizona trip? Oh yeah. So Really cool. It's been a couple years since we've been able to do investor trips where Jennifer invites investors to come along to a specific market and learn something that's very fascinating about that market and learn about the opportunities. So we are now able to do for our inner circle members, finally, after COVID, the whole COVID crap, I'll call it <laughs> the whole COVID. Crap. We're now finally able to start the investor trips again. So in February, we are bringing the investors to Arizona for those of you that want to come. And we're going to really focus on short term rentals, the opportunities in Arizona with short term rentals and just have a great weekend. We're going to have, you know, Friday night, a networking party. Saturday, we're going to have some in, in kind of sessions and learning from some of the short term rental experts. We actually have some members that have short term rentals in Arizona that we're hoping to get to be able to see as well. Um, so and then Sunday, a little bit more of some learning sessions. So. Great weekend, great. These events have been, in the past, they've been huge for the momentum that somebody can create coming out of them and, and the motivation, right? So yeah, yeah we're really, really excited about this event. Yeah, and what's awesome is that a lot of our members are spread around the country. I mean, we have investors all over, but these times are for us all to get together in a specific market so we can learn about short-term rentals um, as well as the Phoenix market and take that knowledge and expand it into new markets as well. And I do believe we have uh, maybe about 10 to 15 spots still available. So if anyone is interested, um, just feel free to let us know, uh, maybe in the chat. If you don't have the information already, we'll make sure to get that over to you. Um, now, Dina, now that we've gone through kind of your journey, your first property and kind of the investing strategies that you're doing right now, um, and I know you talk with a lot of our investors, what is uh, maybe one piece of advice um, you would give to a new investor that's just starting out right now? Boy, that's really tough. One piece of advice. Uh, <laughs> I think I would say, and I'm going to expand on it a little bit, but I would say take action. Thomas Jefferson said, action is the foundational key to all, all success. And I so believe that because if we don't make a decision to, to make a decision to take action, then nothing is going to happen. I talk to, you know, some, some of the members on the coaching calls and, and I will say, okay, you have this money in the bank, make a decision to take action, make a decision to write an offer, make a decision to go under contract, set a hard date. And keep yourself accountable. I mean, the cool thing is we have accountability groups that we can help people get set up in that helps them. But we also have to keep ourselves accountable. And I think that that's really big. We have to be we have to be motivated. You have to decide what is it that motivates you. You know, we're either motivated by fear or what we can lose or what we can get. I think I I got pretty fortunate in my unfortunate situation that my motivation was the fear of of what would happen if I was gone tomorrow? Because the harsh reality hit me that to here today, gone tomorrow can be reality. And so I was lucky. I, I, I was motivated by the fear of what would happen to my children if I was gone. But that old passion that I had that sunk down because of life and the desire of what I could create also came to life. So both of those motivations came to me as a thunderstorm. 
So I think knowing why you want to do what you want to do, you got to you got to know why and you got to stay focused. You have to put it in front of you. You have to take action. You have to define your why. And you have to then say to yourself, what is it I'm looking for? What, what, what is it, right? Not only your why, but what do I want? Do I want to bring my partner home? I wanted to bring Dennis home from Boeing early, which we did. We brought him home 10 years. We could have brought him home 15 years. We kept him for medical benefit, stuff like that. But we, I wanted to bring him home early from Boeing. He worked hard. He, he deserved it. We worked hard on all of the rental portfolio stuff that we built up. He deserved it. Some of you maybe just want to bring your spouse home part time so that they can spend more time with your, with your children. But you got to know you got to know what it is you want. And Jennifer said to me early on, "What's your number?" And I said, "What's well, my number?" And she said, "Yeah, what's what's yours and Dennis's number? What is it that you want to have dollar amount monthly so that you can say I've achieved the financial independence that I want, or the the point where you can achieve." Uh, you can be at the spot where you can make the choices that you want to make. So you got to know what you want, why you want it, and and define it. Define it and keep it in front of you. But the, I guess, Justin, if I had to give one piece of advice, it is take action. Make a decision to take action. I love it. And your first deal does definitely not has to be a home run or, or right. anything. I mean, the first deal is really going to be kind of that great foundation for you to build and expand on that. Um, so you can identify maybe some things you like and don't like, and uh, you can keep uh, adding to that as you grow your portfolio even more. And now speaking about action, um, 2022 is right around the corner. Do you have any goals or plans for your 2022 investing? You know, I do. We just recently um, sold a couple single family homes and I really want to, you know, I want to go bigger. I mean, we have most of our portfolio is multifamily. Our largest unit is an eight unit and I, I want to go either eight unit or, or maybe a little bit larger as well. So I think we want to add one more one more property, but we really want to hone in on exactly what that property is. We don't need the income. It's not it's it's not something that we're not actively looking to invest, but we have money sitting in the bank. And if we have money sitting in the bank, that's a problem, in my opinion. Um, so same with any of you. If you have money sitting in the bank that could be working for you, then you got to do something with it. Right. And there's nothing better than real estate. So we've got to do something with some money. And um, I'm sure it's going to be something larger than four unit or larger. Exactly. And leaving money in the bank is fine. But if you can have that money work for you, I mean, just the potential is limitless. So thank you so right. much for kind of going over your journey. Um, in about five years, I cannot believe um, that even at 45, it's never too late to get nope. in the game, take action and get out there. So thank you so much, Dina, for joining us here today. And if, and if anyone has any other questions about Dina's journey or how she was able to create this success, please feel free to leave it um, in the chat box below. And I'm sure Dina will get back to you very soon. Absolutely. Thank Happy you. To. Thank you, Dina. Happy holidays. Thanks, Justin. You too. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.